shooting at the 111 Club, 6232 Hollywood Boulevard. Sounds like a homicide thief. Two of the dead guys caught in the crossfire were carrying army surplus morphine. Get over there before homicide tramples all over the place. Criminal justice has rarely been explored in video games, and the same thing can be said about the 40s. Yet the two collide in L.A. Noir, a crime drama that challenges you to crack the case using clues, interrogation, and good old-fashioned intuition. Featuring a revolutionary facial capture technology that provides incredibly realistic characters, his life is a gumshoe glamorous, or just police blotter fodder. All right, have we finished flirting? You got something to discuss, Roy? You're gonna stand around beating the meat while my lunch gets cold. <laughs> We're making inquiries into the recent deaths of four musicians. You play as Officer Cole Phelps, a green cop in the LAPD with a celebrated war history. A pile of combat medals lands him in the traffic division, but it's not long before he's moving up the ranks into homicide and vice. The story is broken up into three distinct parts. The beginning of the game sees him working the traffic beat, but eventually a series of murders puts Cole on the trail of a serial killer. The game's final act has him investigating drug and real estate rings. You know dope has never been my thing, Roy. It's always been for Schmendricks, like uh, Jack D and Jimmy Utley. The plot also has a couple threads that dangle below the surface. There are frequent flashbacks to Cole's troubling military tour of duty, and there are newspapers scattered around the game that show you what's happening independent of Cole's investigations. All three threads are eventually woven together into a prose that will keep you guessing. You play as a cop, but L.A. Noir unearths the gray areas of being a policeman in the 40s. Search warrants are luxury, cops aren't always playing for the same team, and racial tensions are high across the board. It does not shy away from the hard topics, and the sharp, period-specific script helps convince. Felix, we didn't go through Okinawa to come back to this on our streets. I've got the LAPD to keep me safe, right? Me and all my people. The main story is rolled out in a linear fashion, with side missions relegated to beat cop duties that have no bearing on the overarching tale. It's unflinchingly told and gritty, avoiding the pratfalls typical of games like this, but the final third does drag a bit. What caused the blunt force injury to the face? Could be anything from a baseball bat to a lug wrench. I'll have more details after the autopsy. <laughs> Don't tell me when and how I can come and go on my own property. It is not this is America, safe, dickhead. sir. Now step back or I'll lock you Smart up for mouth, a threat. Son of a bitch! Ellie Noir is a free-roaming game, to an extent. You can take any of the 90-plus period-specific cars from citizens at any time in the name of police work and take in the City of Angels at your leisure. Just don't expect to pilot any sort of aircraft or motorcycles. Since you're a boy in blue, you have to mind your manners at all times. Running over citizens or even driving over a signpost will cost you dearly when it comes time to receive a case rating. It's impossible to pull your weapon in public unless the game mandates it, and the same goes for any type of fisticuffs. All that stuff is reserved for the cases themselves. Three! <laughs> Just like the story, the cases are rolled out in a linear fashion. Within each, there's some slight wiggle room in the order in which you visit locations or interview people of interest, but that's essentially where the latitude ends. At the conclusion of each investigation, you're given a rating based upon how many clues you collect and how well you did in your interviews, and how much damage you did. You can also go back and replay any completed case for a higher rating. Just about everything you do rewards you with experience points that ultimately improve your rank. As you rank up, you're rewarded with new outfits and intuition points that'll help you during interrogations. There are also newspapers to collect that show you what's happening independent of the main character's actions, over 30 landmarks to unearth, and over 40 brief street crime missions to tackle independent of the main story arc. To help you make sense of everything, you can bring up your investigator's notebook at any time to peruse locations, clues, suspects, and much more. Compared to leading games in the genre, L.A. Noir is a streamlined, more linear experience. There's one clear path through the 15 to 20 hour experience with little room for deviation, though there's certainly some incentive to go back and replay cases to improve your rank. The lack of competitive multiplayer isn't a huge surprise, but since you work with a partner 95% of the time, co-op is a realistic expectation that's not realized. Rockstar's social club is utilized to ask the community for hints, but otherwise, there are few extras. I'm doing time, and I'm doing time. If you play open world games for the sandbox experience of running amok with guns blazing, L.A. Noir will leave you disappointed. Being a good guy simply takes some toys out of the sandbox, yet you still have the full accoutrement of actions. Cole can use a full arsenal of firearms utilizing GTA's cover system and generous auto-lock, but unless you head off the beaten path to tackle the frivolous street crime side missions, the gunplay takes a backseat until the game's final act. Instead, you can count on a lot of missions where you chase after suspects on foot or in a vehicle. 
The biggest hurdle to overcome in the foot chases is the floaty, imprecise controls. Just trying to line Cole up to investigate a clue on the ground can be a challenge at times. Many foot chases end with fisticuffs where you utilize a simple parry punch and finish system to deliver some justice. Los Angeles was nowhere near the size it is today back in the 40s, but it will still take you quite a while to drive from one side to the other. Using the map and waypoint system, you can warp to any location by allowing your partner to take the wheel. Because you're penalized for any fender benders, it's smart and efficient to ride shotgun as much as possible. While the driving and gunplay are muted, Ellie Noir is all about solving crime, so it's appropriate that the majority of your time is spent investigating. Each case generally plays out in a similar fashion. You start at the police station getting the job from your superiors, and then you head out to the crime scene. Once there, you have to search for clues aided by the rumble of your controller. Items of interest can then be rotated using the left analog stick to locate hidden clues. Then you search any bodies on site, being sure to check their pockets, where there's almost always your first lead in the form of an address, business name, or phone number that you can call in. The final component is questioning any persons of interest. Ma'am, I'm Detective Phelps, Administrative Vice Squad. Welcome to the 111 Club, Detective. Feels like I've had half the LAPD in here today already. Once you've engaged a witness or suspect in conversation, you have to use your power of intuition to decide whether they're telling the truth, acting suspicious, or outright lying. Accusing them of fibbing requires hard evidence from the list you've compiled. Make a false accusation and they'll abruptly halt the line of questioning or clam up outright. Why are you lying, Lynch? What are you covering up? Is that the best you've got? You're expecting me to confess to being the driver? It can be tricky, but the absolutely incredible facial animation goes a long way towards tipping a suspect's hand. You can also use intuition points you glean from ranking up to eliminate possible answers. Even if you do completely bomb a line of questioning, the game rarely punishes you. You'll have to live with it in your final case ranking, but things keep moving forward, even going so far as to ask you if you want to completely skip action sequences if you fail them a couple times. Ellie Noir features a nice mix of driving, shooting, fighting, and investigating, but the focus is clearly on detective work. The action sequences become repetitive rather quickly, but the investigations are plenty engrossing and carry the game. You'll spend more time watching than interacting, but there's no denying that it's a one-of-a-kind experience. How about a scoop for the examiner, Galloway? You could use some good press. Another tramp, another message. Is the werewolf back in business, boys? You have a mother, asshole? A sister? How about showing some respect for this poor woman? People are dying of overdoses. If you know anything about it, you need to tell me. Much has been made of the revolutionary facial capture technology used in Ellie Noir. And once you experience it, there's no going back. It's simply incredible. Wrinkles crumple, eyes dart about, and brows are cocked all in the hopes of giving you insight into a suspect's honesty. It allows a level of emoting that's never been seen in interactive entertainment. And without it, Ellie Noir would be half the game it is. <laughs> I don't believe so. Government organizations don't usually get involved in promotions. The time period is also absolutely nailed. From the vernacular used in dialogue to the soothing jazz music and convincing costuming, you're transported to the 40s and never taken out of it. It's probably as close as you're going to get to actually living in this period in time. Subtle touches like instruments draining from the score as you find more clues on a crime scene shows an acute attention to detail few games possess, and the voice work is impeccable. No sign of the scrapper? No, sir. Looks like he left town after the fight. Okay. It's homicide's problem now. You'll experience frame rate stutters or the occasional glitch, and the vehicle camera could use some work, but it's one great looking and sounding game overall. Step on it, huh? Just get me a little closer. So who could have killed Celine? Where did she go last night, Jacob? The bar, I suppose. Ellie Noir floors you out of the gate, loses some steam due to repetition, but eventually wins the day thanks to its subtlety, attention to detail, and stunning character interaction. It has a certain level of class to it and sets a new standard for storytelling in video games, but it's also a bit limited compared to its contemporaries. It's a great choice for anyone looking for something refreshing in a medium of Me Too, so put on your detective cap and get your notebook at the ready. Ellie Noir is one case worth cracking. You'll find him holding court at the Macambo. You can wait. There's something I need to be sure of. Give me till tomorrow morning. <laughs>